Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Q3 and 9 months FY24 earning conference call of Lumax Auto Technologies Limited. This conference call may contain certain forward-looking statements about the company which are based on beliefs, opinion and expectation of the company as on date of this call. These statements are not the guarantees of future performance and involve risk and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star, then zero on your touch tone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Anmol Jain, Managing Director of Lumus Auto Technologies Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. A very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. A very warm welcome to our Q3 and 9-month FY24 earnings conference call. Along with me on this call, I have Mr. Deepak Jain, Director, Mr. Sanjay Mehta, Director and Group CFO, Mr. Vikas Marwa, CEO of the company, Mr. Naval Khanna, Corporate Head Taxation, Mr. Ashish Dubey, CFO of the company, Ms. Priyanka Sharma from Corporate Communications, Mr. Ankit Takral from Corporate Finance, and SGA, our Investor Relations Advisor. The results and presentations have been uploaded on the Stock Exchange and the company's website. I hope everybody has had a chance to go through the same. I would like to begin by giving some insight into the Indian economy, followed by the performance of the automotive industry in the quarter gone by, and lastly, a few important updates on your company. India has seen a host of reforms post-COVID that has accelerated the pace of growth of our economy. While the rest of the world economy is still recovering from the pandemic, India is racing ahead thanks to peak manufacturing, strong demand, and increased capex in the public and private sectors, which have raised GDP growth to approximately 7%. However, challenges such as inflation and global uncertainty persist and any adverse geopolitical action can impact the country's growth momentum. Speaking of the performance of the automotive industry for the quarter, the quarter gone by has witnessed robust growth on the back of festive and marriage season as well as demand recovery in rural India. The robust expansion of passenger vehicles is driven by increasing disposable incomes and the availability of convenient financing options. Notably, the premium SUV sector has witnessed noteworthy demand in 2023, contributing significantly to the overall growth in the passenger vehicle sales. Looking into the future, the positive momentum is expected to continue into 2024 and beyond propelled by ongoing model launches, expanding market reach in rural India, and an overall rise in per capita income. Now let's talk about the two-wheelers, which also saw a remarkable upturn in sales this quarter thanks to the festive period from Navratri to Diwali. Moreover, the escalating demand for mid- and high-end two-wheelers suggests significant growth opportunities for component solution providers like us. There have been significant advancements in the electric vehicle two-wheeler market with both new and established players venturing into this space. It is envisaged that this segment will gain traction in the next years and offer significant advantages to component manufacturers. Commercial vehicles experience a subdued quarter with respect to quarter two, primarily due to price hikes from emission regulations and seasonal factors coming into play. Moreover, construction activities were halted in several regions across the country due to increased pollution levels, further impacting growth in this sector. Similarly, the tractor segment also witnessed a relatively stagnant quarter. EVs are seeing good acceptance across the country on account of multiple EV launches by OEMs, increasing consumer awareness for green mobility solutions, and a push from government for the sector with subsidies. However, despite this positive momentum, we acknowledge that the EV sector is still in its early stages of development for passenger vehicles, 
facing challenges such as inadequate charging infrastructure and limited domestic battery manufacturing capabilities. The widespread adoption of EVs on a larger scale hinges upon the improvement of charging infrastructure and the reduction of costs associated with EV ownership. As these critical aspects continue to evolve and improve, we anticipate a further acceleration in the adoption of EVs across the country, paving the way for a more sustainable future in mobility. Coming to the auto ancillary sector, the increasing premiumization across passenger vehicles as well as two-wheelers require high technology components, boasting a significant opportunity for leading auto ancillary players like us to increase the content per vehicle. Along with this, the sector is experiencing tailwinds led by increased focus on safety with the introduction of Bharat MCAP and changing emission norms. Looking ahead, with multiple launches planned by OEMs, particularly in the EV space, we are confident in our ability not only to secure orders from leading OEMs, but also to expand our product and customer portfolio. Leveraging our decade-old decades old partnerships with global leaders, we are well positioned to indigenously design, develop, and manufacture high technology components, further strengthening our competitive advantage in the market. Coming to Lumax Auto Technologies, I would like to give you an update that we have expanded our operations by opening a new facility in Chakan, Pune for Lumax Cornalia Auto Technologies. The facility is equipped with state-of-the-art precision European machinery to ensure top-notch production quality and productivity. It boasts of a diverse product range, including air filter systems, snorkels, and various blow-molded products such as urea tanks and expansion or coolant tanks. Notably, this plant represents a significant milestone as it will be the first to manufacture plastic fuel tanks for commercial vehicles. With this new facility, Lumax Cornalia will enhance its current production capacity by almost 40% in a phased-wise expansion. Additionally, with an aim to boost our aftermarket presence, we have forged a strategic partnership with Germany's Blue Cam Group, a leader in innovative automotive car care solutions to offer Indian consumers world-class automotive care products spanning from preventive and maintenance solutions additive, car and bike care, diagnostic software, and tools. A large network and the extensive experience of Blue Chem Group puts us in an advantageous position to cater to the high-quality automotive care solutions that will enhance customer satisfaction and reliability in the Indian market. Coming on the entity-wise performance, the standalone entity caters to integrated plastic modules, the aftermarket business, chassis and swing arm for two-wheelers, trailing arm for three-wheelers under the metallic business and two-wheeler lighting. The standalone entity has contributed 47% of the total consolidated revenues for nine months at FY24. The Pantnagar plant of the company won the prestigious JIPM TPM special award in the month of February 2024 being now the first supplier of Bajaj Auto supplier cluster to achieve this milestone. IAC India, the recently acquired 75% subsidiary, which is a tier one interior systems and component supplier to key automotive OEMs in the country, including Mahindra and Mahindra, Maruti Suzuki, Volkswagen India, and Volvo Aisha Commercial Vehicles. The entity has contributed 32% of the total consolidated revenues for nine months at FY24. IAC management team along with Lumax will certainly continue to drive the business growth forward. The board of directors of IAC India has approved the scheme of merger with its holding company live on August 4th, 2023, with effect from the appointed date of March 10th, 2023. Whether the scheme has been filed with the Honorable NCLT Mumbai bench on August 28, 2023, which is pending for approval. Lumax Mano Ally Technologies, the 55% subsidiary which manufactures manual, AMT, and automatic gear shifter systems and has the market leadership position, contributed 13% to the total consolidated revenue. 
Export business of automatic gear shifters for a global platform is on track and is performing well. We are also working in tandem with the joint venture partner to increase our reach to newer markets. The company is sitting on an order book of approximately 50 crore rupees. Dumax Cornalia Auto Technologies, the 50% subsidiary manufacturing air intake systems and urea tank, commanding 100% share of business with Volkswagen and Tata Motors, contributed 6% to the consolidated revenue. This joint venture holds a strong order book of over 70 crores, and keeping in mind the same, the company's new facility has commenced its operations in Q4. Lumax Ituran Telematics Private Limited has successfully commenced supply of telematics parts to Daimler India in the current quarter. The volumes are expected to grow significantly in the remaining part of the financial year with addition of a new range of products. Lumax Alps Alpine India Private Limited, a 50% subsidiary for the manufacturing and sale of electric devices and components including software related to the automotive industry contributed 1% to the total consolidated revenues. This joint venture holds a strong order book of more than 100 crores. During the quarter, the board of directors of the company has considered and approved the acquisition of Lumax Ancillary Limited by acquiring the entire equity share capital. Accordingly, Lumax Ancillaries has become wholly owned subsidiary of the company with effect from January 25th, 2024. Lastly, on the order book front, the company has a healthy order book of approximately 1,100 crores, out of which almost more than 90% is new business and EV contribution is approximately 40% of the total order book. Now I would like to hand it over to Mr. Sanjay Mehta, the Director and Group CFO, to update you on the operational and financial performance of the company. Good afternoon, everyone. I will brief on the operational and financial performance for Q3 and 9-month FI24. For 9-month FI24, uh, four integrated plastic modules contributed 48% to overall revenue, followed by aftermarket at 14%, DS sector at 13%, fabrication at 8%, emission at 6%, lighting products at 5%, and others at 6%. Passenger vehicles contributed 47% to the overall revenue, two and three wheelers at 24%, aftermarket at 14%, CVs at 9%, and others at 6% for nine months FY24. For more detailed operational highlights, one can refer our investors' presentation uploaded on the exchanges and companies' website. With respect to financial highlights, the consolidated revenue for Q3 and nine months at rupees 732 and 2064 crores respectively, up by 65% and 52% respectively year on year. The main reason for the same is consolidation of revenue from IAC India, which is stood at rupees 246 crores and 665 crores for Q3 and 9 months respectively. EBITDA margin stand at 15.8% for Q3 as against 12.2% for Q3 FY23 up by 360 bips. The EBITDA margin for nine months is at 14.7%, which is up by 270 bips from nine month FY23. IAC EBITDA for nine month FY24 is 131 crore at 19.7%. PET after minority interest for the nine months is stood at 86 crores as compared to 74 crores in nine months last year. PET margins stood at 4.2% for nine months as against 5.5% in FY23. The lower PET margin with respect to last year is because of higher interest cost on account of long-term debt of Rs. 375 crores and high depreciation of intangible assets on account of acquisition of IAC India. The net debt as on uh, 31st December 24 is 91 crores. The capex incurred during nine months is 78 crores, which includes 31 crores on account of leasehold assets. The actual capex outlay is 47 crores. The full year estimate is around 90 to 100 crores, excluding any leasehold asset, which is slightly down from the earlier capex guidance of 110 to 120 crores. With this, we open the floor for questions. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone? who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone. 
If you wish to remove yourself from question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Nisarg Vakhiri from NB Alpha Fund Management LLP. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I had two specific questions. The first was that what sort of visibility do you have for uh, the various subsidiaries that we have on what should be their contribution for next year? So Lumax, Ituran, Lumax, Chop, Lumax, Yokovo, number one. Number two, uh, what are the plans for Lumax uh, Alpine for FY25? Uh, we are at, I think, some 30, 35 crores of revenue uh, for this year. What sort of revenue visibility you have for next year? Thank you so much. So thank you. So number one, for your first question, I think all the joint ventures put together in the current year are about close to 20% of the consolidated revenues. Of course, the larger pie comes from the Lumax Mano and Lumax Cornalia, and there is some minuscule contribution from the rest of the joint ventures. Uh, as far as the order book goes, uh, as I mentioned, about more than 100 crores of the order book is sitting on ALPS. Even the Lumax Yop and Lumax Ituran are sitting at some order book of about 30 crores, 35 crores each. So we are definitely bullish on the prospects of certain joint ventures like Lumax uh, Yokovo, Lumax Ituran, apart from, and of course Lumax Alps, apart from Lumax Cornalia and Lumax Mano, which are the more established joint ventures. Uh, giving FY25 specifically, I think uh, while we will see a, the total contribution from joint ventures to remain approximately around the same vicinity of 20 to 25 percent of the consolidated revenues. Uh, but in absolute amount, we do expect it to grow by about 20 to 25 percent in revenue terms on a year-on-year -year basis uh, because there are uh, some strong uh, orders which will get into production in FY25. Okay. Sir, and uh, last question. Uh, we have a reasonably strong balance sheet, uh, but there are some inefficiencies in uh, the amount of interest we pay versus the interest expense that we have versus the other income that we make on the cash. Now, I understand that you had a extremely strategic and fantastic acquisition, IAC. Uh, however, can this uh, sort of inefficiency be rectified next year? I'll let Sanjay answer that. The, the debt which we have taken for IAC it is in the lock-in period for 18 months. So after the expiry of debt period, certainly we'll look into that. Okay. Thank you so much for answering my questions and all the very best. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all participants, you may press star and want to ask questions. Next question is from the line of Abhishek from Dolat Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for opportunity and Congress for a strong set of numbers. Uh, so this year, uh, IIT India uh, revenue growth is very impressive and uh, margin is very much uh, strong, around 19%. So will this uh, 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 Acceleration will continue, uh, uh, in, especially on the margin side? So I think IAC India, of course, since it's the first year of consolidation, you are seeing a very strong set of, let's say, growth for the overall company. Uh, on a consolidated basis, approximately one-third of the revenues comes from IAC India. We have a strong order book out of the 1,100 crores, almost close to uh, more than 55% of the revenue is of IAC India from an order book standpoint. So going forward, I expect the contribution on the revenue side of IAC to continue in the same vicinity of about 30 to 35%. And in terms of the margin, I think a sustained margins of uh, IAC would be probably close to around 18% EBITDA. There were a few, uh, let's say, extraordinary incomes 
one timers for the quarter three. So the uh, number you look at for quarter three specifically uh, of about close to 20% plus is a little bit of an abnormality, but I think on a regular basis, yes, the margins of 18-19% should continue. So in this quarter, EBITDA margin is stood at a 14.5%. This is excluding the other income. So this uh, margin will continue to be higher because of the higher revenue contribution from the ISA. I think for both reasons. Number one, as I mentioned, uh, I would not say higher contribution. The contribution, as I mentioned before, from IAC will continue to be steady. However, there will also be a growth on the joint ventures and also the standalone from the aftermarket perspective. So all those, those also, the growth which is in the joint ventures is coming at a much better margin than the current performance of the joint ventures. So the margins will definitely get better, not just because of IAC operating at a higher margin, but also significant portion of the order book of the joint ventures coming at a better margin than what they are operating at presently. And uh, you are uh, putting a new business, uh, uh, new plan for the air intake system. So. Uh, what kind of the incremental revenue will come from this plant and when it will start to kick in uh, revenue? So, I'll let Vikas answer that. So, we have commissioned a new plant, uh, as you are aware, at Pune. This is uh, for the Lumex Cornalia joint venture that went live uh, last week. Uh, this is uh, intended to add 40% additional capacity from our current uh, capabilities and our machine capacities over the next uh, 12 to 18 months, but you can safely assume at least uh, 40 crore rupees upside in terms of uh, revenue that will uh, accrue to us in FY25 alone. Okay. And uh, in this quarter, uh, uh, basically, uh, tax rate was high. Tax rate is around uh, right now the 30 percent. So, what would be the effective tax rate uh, for FY25? So actually we are just waiting for the merger of IAC also. So whatever the intangible assets is there, we'll get that better tax uh, that uh, detection. And also the auditor has taken the view of the some kind of that joint venture uh, loss they have taken as it is without keeping mind in the future recoverability. So way forward the tax would be almost around 25 to 26 percent. And the uh, depreciation rate is very high because of the intangible effects in the IAC is there. So when yeah. will it start to come down? No, in fact, uh, we, the intangible assets will be a, we have created on the acquisition that will depreciate in the period of 5 to 10 years. So we are getting that after the merger, the tax efficiency will be there. So tax, we are getting uh, almost benefit of 53 crores approximately in the period of 10 years. So tax will, I mean the depreciation will remain slightly higher for next 5 to 7 years. And uh, uh, what is this intangible asset? Almost 213 crores. And for what sir? Uh, is it goodwill or is it uh, uh, software? Goodwill, there is no depreciation. Of course the goodwill is there. But there are three types of one is that customer connect assets and the technology and the, uh, I mean the one more asset. Uh, Created three types intangible assets that we create customer relations. Thank you, sir. That's all from my side. Thank you. A reminder to all participants you may press star and one to ask questions. Next question is from the line of Resham Jain from DSP Asset Managers. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, good afternoon, team, and uh, many congratulations on. Uh, 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 solid uh, performance. Um, so, so my question is uh, on uh, growth. This year has been uh, very strong, uh, led by acquisition. But if I look at the uh, base business X IEC, uh, the uh, the the growth is uh, maybe slightly uh, uh, slower. Um, so overall, uh, let's say. Um, uh, 
going forward how how should one think about let's say the growth between the two businesses uh, the iec growth and uh, the growth in the base uh, business which we used to have um that is my first question so thank you so you're absolutely right i think if we remove iec the growth is kind of similar to the industry growth for the 9 months period uh so we have not outperformed the industry but it is pretty much in line with the industry uh, without iec uh, of course the solid 52% revenue growth for 9 months is majorly contributed because of the iec i think going forward number 1 the revenue forecast for let's say fy25 we do anticipate that we will fare much better than the industry uh, a because of the diversity of the products and also we are on various models the new model introductions so in terms of uh, guidance i would say that we should be growing probably anywhere around 20% plus on a top line for the next full financial year uh, growth in all the three buckets the stand alone the joint ventures as well as iac is expected to be in a similar vicinity uh, i would assume that iac would still continue to grow at about a 15% year on year basis or on a revenue and uh, on the joint ventures and stand alone i think the growth would be uh, definitely a lot better uh because of the orders in hand and also probably because this year was a not a significant growth year so a lot of this growth will kick in the next year from a revenue perspective so overall yes we should be looking at a, a 20% consolidated revenue growth in fy25 okay understood and uh, iec merger uh, uh, you have acquired 75% 25% is what will get merged right so there will be some valuation uh because of the same is that no, I, understanding correct no i don't think that understanding is, is correct so iec is getting merged with the parent company of light so then it will become a wholly one subsidiary okay. of okay. Uh, lhgl understand so, so 75% sense. still remains okay got it correct the 75% the 25% My will reason. continue to be held by the foreign partner understood and uh, so just one more thing given that uh, iec and uh, some of these uh, gvs have a better margin than the stand alone business so um, uh, what should be the company level margin one should uh, expect let's say uh, going forward next 2 uh, 3 years the thing at a company level if you see that obviously i already mentioned the sustainable ebitda margin on a iec would be let's say closer to around 18 or percent which would be on a sustainable basis uh, if you see the other consolidated stand alone and joint ventures we are already operating at close to around 12 and a half percent i do expect that next year this should definitely jump and get into the teen margins as i have always uh, envisaged uh, and i think the iac will also continue to be in the same level vicinity so from a 14 14 1/2% ebitda uh, which currently the consolidated entity is looking at i would definitely feel that this should inch more towards 15% plus okay and the sir one last one is on iec so uh, when we took over the business we had uh, mahindra and mahindra as the uh, is the only customer and we said that uh, we will mine more customers over a period of time uh, so how is uh, the progress happening on that front uh, and uh, uh, because mahindra is uh, number third number fourth uh, player uh, and you already have relationship with some of the larger ones so uh also from let's say 3 5 years perspective how should you uh, look at this business given you are not present with some of the larger customer there so i think number one there is a correction mahindra and mahindra is not the only customer mahindra is the largest customer iac continues to enjoy an existing relationship with other oems namely maruti suzuki volkswagen as well as volvo iser uh just for your consumption i think uh, iac did a revenue of over 50 crores with maruti suzuki for the 9 months of this current fiscal uh 
the objective here was that we will take IAC and expand our relationships for IAC with the other OEMs. We will probably definitely grow our wallet share in Maruti Suzuki and also try and get uh, business from other OEMs with which IAC does not have a current ongoing relationship and that's where the Lumax management or the Lumax advantages come into play. So we are working with Tata Motors very closely. I do hope that in the subsequent quarters we should be able to share some positive news on uh, other OEMs development and traction. Okay, understood. Great, sir. Thank you very much and uh, all the best. Thank you very much. Thank you. A reminder to all participants, you may press star and want to ask question. Next question is from the line of Amit Hiranandani from SMIFS Limited. Please go ahead. Performance. Uh, so my first question is basically uh, on the IAC, you said there is some one-off uh, income in this quarter. Can you please quantify that and what is that one-off? So it's, when I say one-off income, it's the regular operational income, but it is more pertaining to the previous quarters as a price increase uh, because there are one or two quarter lag, but that amount is not significant. It's, I think, only about three crores or so. Okay. And then on the standalone margins were pretty much impressive this time. So can you please guide the, what is the sustainable run rate we can assume? So I think, as I mentioned, if you look at standalone as well as the joint ventures, let's say without the IAC piece, we are currently sitting at almost close to uh, between 12.5 to 13% margin. And definitely the endeavor would be because we are gaining a lot of uh, the new order books is coming at a better margin than what we've traditionally performed in some of the joint ventures. And also, if you see, you know, we had a pretty flattish revenue in the standalone entity uh, for the current fiscal. And we are expecting a double-digit growth in the standalone entity even going forward in the next fiscal. So there will be definitely cost uh, optimization uh, of fixed costs and better realization. So for those reasons, I would emphasize that we should be operating at a, you know, anything around teen EBITDA margins for the entity without IAC. So 13 to 14% would be my uh, best guidance uh, from a sustainable EBITDA margin for the entity without IAC. Okay. And sir, uh, can you just uh, help me with the uh, revenue and EBITDA numbers for for all, all your subsidiaries for 9M? So, can we share these numbers offline with you because uh, this would be a long this thing. But if I were to just give you a, a breakdown, I mean, you know, 50% of the consolidated revenues approximately comes from the standalone entity. Uh, I think 47% to be more precise, and about 32, 33% is from IAC, and about 20% is from joint ventures. Uh, this is the nine-month actual data in terms of the contribution of the total pie. Uh, the standalone has had a almost flat growth or a negative two to three percent growth in nine months. Uh, the joint ventures have actually grown by 25 percent, and of course, IAC was a new piece, so that's added to the revenue. Uh, in terms of EBITDA margins, I think we've already spoken about the sustainable EBITDA margins for IAC as well as the joint ventures and standalone business. So, I mean, on a consolidated basis, if you look at uh, the current year, on a full year, you know, we're expecting uh, maybe a growth uh, compared to last year of almost 50%, which is seen in nine months. So, you're looking at anywhere around 2750 to 2800 crores of top line uh, and probably uh, 400 crore plus uh, EBITDA at the full year consolidated level. Okay, okay, I'll take the exact number offline, no issues. Sir, uh, one one question on the order book, if you can share it, uh, you know, on the subsidiary-wise, if you can share IFC, Mano, Cornelia, and other 66 subsidiaries. Sure. So, out of the 1,100 crores, about 60% or about 600 to 650 crores is IFC. Uh, 
uh, about uh, 300 odd crores is all the joint ventures, out of which the major ones are about 110 crores in Lumax Alps Alpine. Uh, Lumax Cornalia is sitting at almost about 70 crores. Uh, Lumax Mano is sitting at about 50, 55 crores. And then you have Lumax Ituran and Lumax Yop, both sitting at around 30, 35 crores each. Uh, that's the bulk of the orders for the joint ventures. And then apart from that, we have about 150 crores of order book for the standalone entity, uh, largely coming from Bajaj Auto for their new EV model. And so, if you can also give guidance on the order execution, especially for El Salpine, Job, Petirun subsidiaries? So, out of the 1100, I would say around 50% of the total order book will come into FY25 revenue, and approximately 30% uh, of it would come into FY26. Okay. Okay. Uh, sir. We were planning to enter into EV products as well. So, any any update on this on this thing, a new yeah. JV or something? Yeah. So definitely, I mean, out of the total order book, almost 40% is coming from EVs. Uh, EVs both in passenger vehicles as well as EV in two wheelers. As I already mentioned, we are uh, already secured some orders for the born electric uh, vehicles of uh, Mahindra and Mahindra, as well as uh, the new variants of electric platforms of Bajaj Auto. Uh, no, specifically the EV specific product like BMS controllers and etc. So we're planning to enter into those products as well, right? So we are still on the drawing board on that. We've still not firmed up a clear strategy onto the EV, but I do believe that there are uh, many more opportunities which are on alternative uh, fuels and alternative technologies than EV which would be of uh, more interest uh, and gain more traction. So we're still evaluating on that. Just one last question, if you can throw some light on the GAPEX side for the next three years, please. A broad number would be fine. So we're looking at approximately 400 odd crores in the next, let's say, give or take three years uh, to get this order book of around 1,100 crores. And just to give you a feel, the asset turnover ratio today is at about 1 is to 2.5. Uh, and I think that is only going to improve going forward. Okay, all the best. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all participants, you may press star and 1 to ask questions. Next question is from the line of Apurva Mehta from AM Investments. Please go ahead. Yeah, sir. Congratulations on great set of numbers. Uh, my question was on the aftermarket side. Uh, we are seeing some, you know, the kind of growth we are expecting and doubling the turnover in next three to four years. We are, you know, going slow on that side. Any any specific reason on that front? So, yes. Yeah, so, if you look at uh, Purvaji, nine months of the current fiscal aftermarket has grown by about 7%. Uh, the reason is primarily that we do see realizations becoming a slight challenge in aftermarket. So just to have a more prudent cash flow management, we are not pushing the sales forward and we are making sure that the realization remains intact. However, having said that, I think we are still very bullish that in quarter four, we should be able to do a better growth. Uh, and for the full year, we should still be able to report a double-digit growth for the aftermarket division. But the guidance of the two to three years horizon remains intact uh, with new partnerships, which we recently entered into with Germany's Blue Chem, as well as a new product development portfolio. We are very uh, confident that we will continue that momentum of uh, doubling our aftermarket revenues in three to four years. And I think we are entering the second year uh, in FY25. And on the Bajaj side, can you throw some light what kind of visibility we have for next year? Because uh, Bajaj, the export is still not become, picking up. So, we have any visibility where we can have other uh, models where we, we can have some kind of a revenue growth coming from there? Sure. So, I think Bajaj, let's understand the two reasons why we've not done extremely well or we've not grown with Bajaj Auto 
so significantly, rather we've had a degrowth in Bajaj Auto from a nine months perspective is largely because of the frames business. And let's understand in the frames, our dependence on two or three models like the Platina and the City, which are mostly on the export and let's say certain domestic, is very high. And both these models have had a negative volume of almost 15% and 40% respectively. So that's the reason, you know, there is a bit of an anomaly as far as our revenues with Bajaj goes versus Bajaj's own performance goes. We've recently gone into the KTM. We've got uh, the KTM Duke model uh, chassis. We are also now, uh, as I mentioned, confirmed for one of the EV variants uh, going forward. Uh, we're also adding more value than rather than just being a fabrication and a frame uh, maker. We're also doing a lot of painting and coating. So it will also increase our content per vehicle. Uh, and the next, of course, we are still in dialogue, but we are hopeful that going forward, we may come on the Pulsar platform as well. Oh, oh. Great, great to see. And, and sir, uh, this margin of 15.8%, which was unbelievable margin, and congratulations to you on the team of LUMAC. But on a steady state going forward, uh, can we assume as a 15% kind of margin for next year? Yeah, I think definitely uh, that margin should be sustainable, uh, both from IAC perspective as well as from the standalone and the joint ventures perspective. So, yes, a consolidated margin of 15% EBITDA should definitely be something which should be sustainable uh, in FY25. And, and can you throw some light on the Lumex ancillary, who are the clients and what kind of revenue we can visualize for, uh, you know, next year and kind of margins in that? So, Lumax Ancillaries currently is more of a wiring uh, supplier as a backward integration to the lighting business of Lumax Industries. That's largely the uh, current uh, business model. However, we are looking at possibly growing this business not just internally as a captive uh, backward integration, but also to OEMs. Uh, I think the revenue pie is approximately close to 150 crores on an annual basis, and we do expect this to continue to grow in FY25 as well, uh, based on two things. One is the organic volume growth. Number two is based on certain customer expansions, and number three is also because of the technological change. Uh, as more and more LED uh, applications come into lighting, the value per uh, wiring harness assembly also goes up. So for those reasons, we do expect this to continue the uh, uh, the upside in terms of the revenue growth going forward. Okay. And what kind of EBITDA margin could they have? Because wiring harness is a low margin business. Typically. So right now, so right now it is uh, still too early for us to give you a guidance because this business is something which we've just gotten into. But I think for now, uh, it is still operating in single-digit EBITDA margins. And once we look at it closely, we will definitely try and uh, bring this back up to, uh, you know, a similar, maybe a double-digit margin or so going forward. And when you when you are telling us that uh, we'll have a 20% growth next year, so we have taken into account uh, Lumex ancillary also, or, or uh, we, have, we, we have not just taken it? Uh, we have taken that into consideration as well. Because that will contribute around 175 to 200 crores. No, about 150. Uh, we have taken 150 uh, as a conservative figure for next year. So 150, even if you take out, you will still be looking at a, or maybe at a 17% or growth without the Lumet ancillary. So it's not adding significantly uh, on a, you know, 3,000 crores if you look at even 150 crores. Yeah. So that's uh, literally about 5%. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, thanks a lot and yeah, wish you all the best. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Karan Mehra from Mehta, Mehta Investments. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you for the opportunity. A couple of questions. 
uh, so we recently started a new facility for LGAT. So basically, we are shifting to a bigger facility now. If you can help us understand, like when can we see the complete shift happening from the older facility to the newer one, and uh, will any business be affected during this transition? Uh, so, Karanji, uh, we have already migrated 100% from the earlier facility, which was a 30,000 square facility, uh, 30,000 square feet to a 225,000 square feet facility. The old plant has been vacated, which is at a vicinity of just two kilometers. Uh, and uh, therefore, there is no further migration that is happening. We will be now going up on the capacity uh, utilization over the next uh, three months. So, Pune is now operating out of one facility for LCAT and one facility out of Pantanagar. Uh, sure, that answers my question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Pritesh Cheda from Lucky Investments. Please go ahead. Sir, uh, I, could, I missed the taxation part. So, after this uh, the amortization which you are taking in Goodwill, what is the taxation that uh, you would incur? Uh, it is, will come in the 25, I mean the 22 plus the jars, etc. Okay. And the minority interest that we see, so IAC is 75% owned by us, so that's where the minority is rising? Yeah, 25% will be minority. Okay. And can you share what is the net margin for IAC? IAC pet is almost around, it's, one minute. For the nine month, if you could share the pad and the top line number. So the top line number was very clear. I think I mentioned that the top line of IAC for uh, the nine months is about 665 crores. Uh, in terms of the PAC margin is about double digits. Again, it's uh, higher than about 10%. I think it's around close to 10 and a half, 11% for nine months. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all participants, you may press star and one to ask questions. Next question is from the line of Dinesh Kulkarni from RDST. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, my question is, I see, uh, you know, we do not have a significant debt on our uh, balance sheet and it's very manageable and uh, even the capex uh, seems to be, uh, you know, a normal range. Do we plan to increase our stake in any of the joint ventures or uh, subsidies uh, with the cash which we expect to generate uh, over the next three, four years? That's my question. No, we are very comfortable with the current arrangement with our, all our joint venture partners. So we do not anticipate any increase in uh, the shareholding between us and the joint venture partners. I think uh, the reason why there is no debt is because there is a surplus cash and the free cash which the uh, companies' operations generate, and that cash is redeployed uh, in terms of the capex. So there is no need for an, any external borrowings for now. Yeah, okay, Th that's my question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Pritesh Cheda from Lucky Investments. Please go ahead. Yes, sir, just a follow-up there. Will we see repayment of the borrowings in the next cycle? Uh, it will start from the next uh, year, and it is a period of four to five years we are anticipating. Though it is a five years term, but looking to the cash flow available, we will take decision that time. Okay. And what would be your cash generation in nine months, the operating cash flow? You're talking about IAC specifically, or are you talking oh, about as a consolidated entity? As a consolidated entity. So on a 300 crore EBITDA, what is the cash flow you would have generated? Uh, I mean, it would differ entity to entity because 300 is a consolidated level. So uh, we'll have to, we'll have to, we'll have to check the offline. offline. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Amit Hiranandani from SMIFS Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, so just on the gross debt side, if you can just let me know the gross debt, including the working capital and the cash position. So it is the gross debt, including working capital, is around 600 crores. 
and we are having the bank balance of almost around 318 crores. Out of that growth debt, the long term is around 410 crores and the working capital is around 190 crores. Okay, so the next question is on the Lumax Ancillary Limited. So you said the EBITDA margin is about a single digit. And the revenue is about 150 crores annually, right? So, so quarter four would be effectively on a consolidated level. The EBITDA margin would little bit come down, right? Because of this merger or acquisition of Lumax Ancillary. Well, again, uh, there would be certain improvement on the other businesses as well. So I would not uh, say because, again, on a quarter basis, it's just about 35 to 40 crores of revenue, which is not so significant for the consolidated entity. So the other businesses are expected to also show a positive uh, momentum in quarter four. So a lot of that would get offset and perform better and that's why I said at a consolidated level the margins would be able to sustain uh, going forward as well from the current levels. So I do not anticipate uh, LAL uh, lower EBITDA margin to have any major impact on the consolidated revenues or profits. Correct. And sir, I was just checking your annual report. So we are paying a royalty to Lumax Industries Limited. So can you please help me in understanding this part please? No, I think we are seeing the. Uh, we are not paying any royalty to Lumex Industries. We are paying uh, uh, service charges to Lumex Management Services, and also to the Mano. No, so Lumex Industries. The one royalty angle we are paying is the royalty we pay for the supplies of Mahindra and Mahindra items to the aftermarket. So we have a very clear arrangement with Mahindra and Mahindra as an OEM. Usually, a lot of the OEMs uh, prohibit us from selling in the open aftermarket by ourselves. But for uh, Mahindra and Mahindra, we were able to make some arrangement that whatever revenues we garner from the aftermarket, there would be a percentage royalty paid to Mahindra and Mahindra. And since Mahindra and Mahindra lighting is handled by Lumax Industries, it is more of a, you know, Lumax Technologies pays Lumax Industries, and then Lumax Industries pays it to Mahindra and Mahindra directly. So that's the only nature of royalty which is there between uh, Lumax Technologies and Lumax Industries. Correct. Very clear. Just last one question. So, sir, on the emerging JVs, what we have, Alpine and etc. So, which JVs can you know turn profitability faster, and by when you can see this happening? So, uh, the positive trend has started, in fact, from Q4 only of the current financial year. Uh, Lumex Ituran uh, will be reporting uh, positive uh, uh, positive uh, EBITDA uh, in Q4. Uh, for the next year, uh, Lumex Alpine and uh, Lumex Ituran both will be uh, profitable and our endeavor will be to get uh, Lumex Yokovo and Lumex York also uh, coming in with a double digit uh, PBT figure by FY26. Uh, this is on the basis of the order book that we have currently in hand and the next 6 to 12 months for the other two joint ventures will still be the development time. Okay. Very well. Thank you so much. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question of the day. I now hand the conference over to management for closing comments. Well, I take this opportunity to thank everyone for joining into the call today. We will keep informing the investor community on a regular basis for updates on your company. I hope we have been able to address all your queries. For any further information, please get in touch with us or strategic growth advisors, our investor relations advisors. Thank you once again and have a good evening. Thank you. On behalf of Lumax Auto Technologies Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your mind.